Good day viewers, welcome to another edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. I'm Manir Dan Ali. Our guest today is Alhaji Bashir Ibrahim Danyaru, who has both studied and walked around the leather balu chain. And that is exactly what we hope to understand in terms of the opportunities that are buried in it. Alhaji Bashir, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me and uh, great to be with you thank you right i mean i know in your cb you have uh, studied more or less in your i mean later education a lot to do with leather both locally and internationally mm -hmm. and among i mean in areas that are known to be the leading age in the world in italy in france and other locations and you also rose to be the production manager of Bata. Bata used to be a very thriving shoemaking industry in Nigeria and you were there for nearly 20 years. Right. What exactly are you doing at present? At present, thank you very much. At present I'm still in the leather business because this is the only business that I know and uh, I have been doing it and I'm enjoying it and I think I'm contributing my own quota to myself, to my country and to the world in general. Will you say that it is rising or it is falling in terms of the opportunities because I mean I did say in the introduction that uh, Bata used to be one of the indigenous or locally uh, indigenous based. I mean, it made shoe Comfort. industry in Nigeria, but it's now a shadow of its so, former self. Right. right. Very good that you put that question now because uh, it should be our foundation. The shoe industry in Nigeria now is unfortunate. Instead of growing, it's going down. And also the leather industry. The leather industry, we used to have a very striving leather uh, uh, balu chain in Nigeria that is well acknowledged around the world because of the quality that we have on our uh, skins, more especially the ghost skin. I remember when we were in primary school, mm. among the export products, mm. they used to list hides and skin. Hide and skin, yes. And it seems to have disappeared now. Hide and skin is still there. Actually, that is my first area of working when I left secondary school. Because at our time, they used to recruit us from secondary school. I started working with veterinary office or veterinary department of uh, Kano State. And uh, we were employed to go to all the markets and supervised the slaughtering or and slaughtering and the flaying or the removal of the skins, skins from the carcass and then subsequent curing because immediately you remove the skin. If you don't cure it, it could it, go bad. It, it, it will go it bad. Will it will start to rot off because water with bacteria don't stay together. You have to extract that water. How you extract it, then that is the curing method. At our time, and some up to now, at our time, there is what we call the open air drying. In That's the one where you apply salt. I remember I see where they apply yeah, salt. Yeah, that is the, this is the recent one. Yes. But before, we do the open air suspending drying and uh, hanging. We have the, uh, what do you call the, the hide, which is a bigger one. We have a frame. And the frame has a holes where we tie it and suspend it so that you stretch you the, stretch yeah you stretch it so that it it, yeah, it, 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 it doesn't it doesn't wrinkles yeah and then for the goat skin and the sheep skin we hang it on a wire mesh so that it does not cover the inner then the outside will be dried as well as the hair will be dried so later after that one before it starts to get hard 
then we fold it and then arrange it to take it either for uh, storage or we take it down to the tanneries. Right, and this is where the tanneries come where? in one of the balu chains that treat the leather and turn it into to skin leather. ready made for making all Le sorts of leather, leather items. Leather goods or footwear. Right. <laughs> so the issue was that at that time there is a constant check and balances and, and also the tracing from the particular place where those skins are slaughtered up to the time that they reach the tannery. So, and we have a method of polo off because at that time, no person is allowed to trade in it in leather, in hide and skin without getting a license from the veterinary department. And now the system has broken down. Totally the system is not working. Anybody can do whatever any, he any, likes. Any, and yeah, and I'll give you an example. We are recently, uh, Sokoto State Government wanted to, uh, to invest in the leather value chain because they found that there is a lot of that in, in Sokoto. The Especially the so-called Sokoto Red Gold. The red Gold, yes. right. So they consulted Unido internationally. That's United Nations in, uh, in Industrial, Industrial Development, Development Organization. Organization. Right. And Unido promised to come and find out what to do a feasibility study. In that course of duty, Unido employed me as a leather expert for, all, for, them to go, uh, for them and me to go and study what is happening in uh, uh, mm -hmm. Sokoto yeah. State right. and do the feasibility studies. And when they came, we, uh, the chief technical officer came from Vienna, uh, 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 Austria, and he met me, we discussed, and uh, he gave me, in order to, he, they, uh, what they were to employ me, they got all my papers, and they said that they want to see me personally. And when he came, he wanted to size me up. Yeah. <laughs> he came to the Ministry of Trade and Industry. We sat down just like the way we are talking with you. And then he gave me a little assignment to see whether truly, because they hardly yeah. believe Nigerians. Exactly, whether you are what you claim to be. What I claim to be. Yes. Then immediately we, we did this thing. He looked at the around with the, all the UNIDO officers in this thing. He said, fantastic. He said, Fantastic, and he say it's fast, fast, and qualitative. The response that he has got right. from me, and they said we should go ahead. And, and what after, was your find in, in Sokoto? In, the, in in Sokoto State, when we went there, the governor gave us the who is still the governor now, uh, Tambo. Yes, Tambo, yes. yes uh, in Sokoto, right? And then we did the, this very well and presented the the report. The, 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 the report. And he said, yes, we should now move forward to uh, actualize what we have already seen on that. Uh, yeah, in the report. In, in Are the, you in now the, in the process of doing that or we, is, we, the, we have is already, the project dead? The project is not, so I cannot say dead, but because the project took us even outside the country. We to went do all I, the necessary yeah, together, groundwork. Yeah, groundwork. I organized a study tour with the uh, uh, UNIDO, which is the United Nations Develop uh, Industrial. Industrial Development Organization. Mm -hmm. They have an uh, office in uh, Italy, the ITFU. Together with the Nigerian uh, UNIDO, myself, Sokoto State uh, contingent, which was uh, led by the executive governor, we went to Italy. And when we went to Italy, we are uh, we were actually supported by the UNIDO in Italy to meet all the confederation of leather and uh, leather and footwear and uh, leather goods manufacturers. And because it's uh, Italy is well known for the for, top, for, for quality, top leather, and the kind was, of leather that fetches a, a, a the lot most of money. And immediately they were keen when they had that Nigerian team are coming because they want to set off a leather chain where they are going to do the tannery, where they are going to do the, the shoe and the other things. Right. So they gathered all the industry, uh, people. Yeah, big industry people there, so that they can, we can now interact together. 
and then have the possibility of buying from them the machineries that we need to set up in Sokoto. But where exactly are we? Because, you know, I'm curious <laughs> that after all the study <laughs> tower, all the trips, and all you the Esther codes, at the end of it all, <laughs> is this factory or industry about... It's not yet done, actually. But after it is still on track. Yeah, I believe it's with the, with the government of Sokoto State. But you have a change of government which could well affect change because the money is living now. Yes, and uh, everything he came to, uh, what they even came to uh, from our finding, what they were shocked was that every blessed week in Sokoto they transport five hundred thousand pieces of skin to Kano. 500,000 thousand pieces. pieces. Yeah, dealers, right. they buy and take it to Kano to because Kano. they cannot process it in uh, Sokoto. It has to stay, uh, move to Kano. So and meaning because that Kano has the, 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 the processing, necessary yeah. processing. So the issue is that if they have those things that we did for them, they don't have to move that thing. The work will be done there and then their people will be involved. They will be skilled and the opportunity will be much, much higher than for you to just sell your raw material. Yeah, exactly. You are adding value, value and processing, processing instead it. of the usual raw material yeah. that Africa you, you, has you been say. doing since the 19th century. And that is one important thing that I would very much like to talk about the leather industry in Nigeria. Can we, can we by unpacking it, can we go back a little uh, before this? Mm. Because the Sokoto red, red and is Kano producing brown. and Kano Brown are the ones producing the leather which for hundreds of years yes. is said to be transported to Morocco through Morocco, to by, Morocco through the train through, in the Sahara, Sahara, Sahara trade, trade, trade route and then gets to Italy and, and then they say, they say it's the best one but it's Moroccan leather which is what they call it. That is true but now they have realized that actually it's in Nigerian leather that gold skin and uh, that kind of brown and the uh, Sokoto red, up to today, up to the time, in front of the governor of Sokoto, it was told by the people, they, they still want those things. But it was sad for them. Now the quality that is coming, reaching them, is not what it used to be because there is no control. Yeah, the system of control has it broken collapsed. down. Collapse and down. Anybody and can, can take can do, anything And they can do whatever he likes. At the end of the day now, what they are telling us at that time is that any skin that comes to Niger from Nigeria is automatically discounted before buying. They discounted some 10%, 20%, whatever. Because they will never buy it at a premium quality. Because is it because the treatment is, there, is not well treated or is it because they are suspecting it is not the kind of uh, skin that they are looking the, the for? The skin it is. It is the same skin. The issue is that the curing, the curing and the process, because leather, you cannot, you cannot repair it. Immediately it's damaged. It's test damaged. It, that, that, that is test damaged. No matter what type of technology you are going to add on top of it, it won't change it. If the leather has started to rotten, it rotten's. So the issue is that the quantity that they are requiring now from Nigeria in that premium quality, they are not getting it. Which, and what, 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 what is the cause of that? Is because the control is not there. Before there was control, in every market, there is a hide and skin assistant there, together with as a hide and skin attendant that collects those uh, raw, raw hide and skin and process it, cure them, and then pass it down to the owner. And that owner must give where he takes it to. Mm. So that, as you are aware, in Nigeria, we have what is called the hide and skin regulation of Northern Nigeria. That the is the law governing the governing, industry. Yeah. And those go governing the law is clearly stated that any skin hide that is got out of the animal, if it is not 
for religious purposes or for naming ceremony, all those personal purposes, which is one, two, or something like that. Right. That one you can do whatever you can do with it. Nobody cares uh, the about The one that. that people do when they yeah. slaughter but, during Eid al-Kabira yeah, and all of that, uh, no, that, that naming ceremony. Naming ceremony. That one is for religious purposes, something you are allowed. But anyone that is for commercial purposes comes under the rules and regulations. You cannot eat it. You cannot do any otherwise. In, in fact, you don't have control over it more than what the government has. Because the government, you must follow those. Those are the rules and regulations that is not available now. And that is what brought the quality of our skin internationally down. But it's not as if the law is not there. It is there. It's, it's just that even the government officials do, do, are do. either unaware of, of, of it or they are not applying it. Some are aware of it. But some, they don't care because the whole of Kano State, we used to have a veterinary department where it started working. At one time, we were about 39 of us going to Zaria only to study leather and come back. And there are still others. But now the whole of Kano State, we have about three or four workers manning that, <laughs> the whole state. How can it be possible? Very interesting point right. about leather and the current situation we are in. Right. It's a conversation I would like us to continue after this short break. Thank you very much. Welcome back. It is still 30 minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television. And our guest today is someone who knows the leather industry inside out and he's helping us to unpack the opportunities there. Um, Alaji Bashir, before we went on break, you are talking about the death of even the government officials that are supposed to help with the regulation of the industry. But what about the goats? Are there still enough goats? I mean, there has been banditry and all sorts of... Uh, Unrest in the northwest, where primarily these uh, ruminants, that is, these animals, are uh, grown. Hasn't that also it's affected the supply? It, uh, it, I can see one, the question is into two, this thing. The population of uh, the animals, that is, the goats, the goat. sheep, and uh, cows, or cattle and uh, camel, they are increasing. But the supply was distracted because, as you rightly said, because there are areas where those people going scouting for it cannot reach. But if you go by the, uh, the migration of the animals in Africa, the Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerian population of our sheep and goats and listen, it has increased considerably, considerably. By last contract, you should see the figure I saw for uh, 2000 and, uh, 2000, uh, 2020, we are having over 200 million. Well, why, why, why then are we importing, uh, or is it being illegally done? That is skin of, especially cows, I have seen truckloads of them coming from Sudan through Maiduguri. Yeah. Or has it always been the case? No. It has... Uh, yeah, that one comes about because of the economic situation in the country. The economic situation has drastically increased the consumption of hide. Okay, cow skin. Cow skin, because it is a delicacy for other people. And where, other people, now, now even the new, where, where they are not eating it in the north, now they are eating it. So pomo has become a big delicacy and is it in any way a threat to the leather industry? It is and it is not. One, I can say that, I always tell people that if <clears throat> it's all about fries, you as a seller, anybody who is going to give you a high price, you sell it to him. If those who are eating it will pay a higher price, definitely they will get the skin. But if the tanneries can buy, process, and do a high quality material, obviously 
Because you work in, uh, 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 those who eat it, it cannot, cannot compete. Cannot, cannot compete. They cannot afford it. Yes, because if you take the leather by itself, now you are talking about a square foot of leather in the international market. It's about thirty dollars. Just a square foot. A, a square foot, yes. And how many will uh, you get uh, on uh, one animal skin, uh, uh, say uh, a uh, goat uh, or a cow? Uh, on one skin, on one cow, uh, one cow, averagely maybe you can get forty. So forty times thirty uh, yeah. dollars. That could be the price. By, by the time you finish processing it. Right, right. So that, there now you can now know definitely. <laughs> a person who is going to consume it or who is going to eat it will not compete with you. Is that, why, is that why, for example, in Kano, there is this large concentration of thanaries, which in spite of the economic hardship, mm. in spite of the lack of power and all the other challenges of mm. industries, they are still there in business? Yeah, there are other tanneries. That, uh, actually, the tanneries in Kano now that are uh, operating, are just wonderful. Because there used to be more than that? There, there used to be more than that. When I used to work well, there, there are about 30 tanneries, but now they are not up to eight in Kano. But the most important thing is that, which we as a people in Nigeria, the government, not, I cannot even blame the government because the government don't even know. But those who are competent, who knows? If the system is checked, correctly, we won't, we won't have where we are now. We started manufacturing leather since 1958. There is a whole tannery that started to, uh, to manufacture uh, leather. Process leather. To process, yeah. uh, mm. to process uh, to, to, to a tannery to turn leather, uh, to turn the skin into a, a leather. Since that time, up to today, up to today, we are still in one cycle because we don't grow. The leather industry is stagnant in one place for one reason that the key players are benefiting from the system. Is it because of that what people sometimes call corrupt ECG, that, uh, that you know, there is that, uh, that, that thing that, uh, about the export credit guarantee, you know, right. which they say that is it part makes of it. it very murky. That is part of it because you are left now, you know, at, at, at the initial, initial stage, we have what is called uh, ban. Because in every country, if you want to promote and to also to allow your indigents or the, the country to benefit, you have to add value to your product. Up to today, we are not exporting finished leather. We are not? We are not exporting finished leather. So they just semi-process it semi, and take semi it? Semi-process and take it out. Oh. Before they say, okay, they are going to uh, ban rule. Okay, it has been banned, fine and good. Then later on, they move and say, let's ban uh, wet blue. Which is like the, the first it, stage of the processing. The processing. The wet blue, it has been banned for so, but up to today, it's going. And one thing that caused that one was the reason that you put people who are going to do the pre-inspection, don't even know what is the different from the, the clothes you are wearing and the leather. So when they just... Show them it anything show them they can, can, especially and, and, when there is the incentive of the, a little Right. Money. And at the end of the day, what you ban will now fetch money for those people who are sending it out. Because it will go as export promotion. Something that you have banned. But because that the system is not being, it has been corrupted, then you will still collect money under EEG, which is about 20%. And the 20% is you and the person, because it's a back-to-back -back business that we know they are doing. You set up a company abroad, you send it to them and sell it to him, and then you tell him to put any price. And then at the end of the day, the government will now, the, you, you wire the money in, you can take it tomorrow. And government will give you 20%. How do you think that could be dealt with? The only way that we have, first and foremost, we have to have in our mind the fear of God 
and also the interests of our country. Because if this country does not progress, we will not progress. Individual cannot progress in a country where it's not progressing. And that is what is now chopped the leather industry because it's stagnant. I say it's stagnant because it's still there. It's still there. They know I have been in this business for 45 years. And up to today, I'll give you an example. Pakistan. Pakistan just come maybe behind us or something like that. Today, if you see the amount of money Pakistan is making on football, Football, this football. Yes, I think they manufacture, they do most of the football. <laughs> they, I was they, there they, and they told us so. That, that is the number yes. one in the world. Football. They just selected and said, let's concentrate on that. What can we say Nigeria has concentrated on now? Only to be sending for other people to process? I show you one thing. You, you take, uh, this is a wallet. This is a wallet. See? It's Made a, of leather. A, yeah, this is our ghost skin. You take a skin of uh, leather here in Nigeria, maximum gold skin, the maximum out, the row is 1,000 naira. Maximum. Maybe you can get it 500, 700. Right. Then you go and process it. After processing it to this quality, maybe you add another one or two, uh, 2,000. Then the whole skin becomes about 3,000 naira. Then if you make this wallet in Nigeria and send it out, now you go to anywhere in Europe, you see you're looking for a leather, leather, leather wallet. wallet yes. The minimum you can get is about 10 pounds. Just for one. If for one. So compare the 10 pounds now, with and out of one skin, you can get about 30 of this. What about the shoe industry itself, which you also worked on, right. having been production manager of uh, Butter. Butter Nigeria right. Limited? Um, are you, I mean, is it, I mean, of course, obviously it's not vibrant. Mm. What is chucking it in that case, in that instance? Really, the issue what is chucking the, the industry, up to now, people say, oh, okay, they make good news, they make good success. There are, since, there are two things that, we must understand mm. technology is not everything. There is a difference between technology and technical know-how. Technology involves maybe the machineries, the materials. You can use technology to change material, to do this and to do that thing. But the technical know-how, it's human. The person who, can, who is going to do <laughs> you, it, yes. yeah, yeah. This is what we like in Nigeria. But what happened because we, we are doing it before? We, 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 we are doing it before because we have a leadership in the industry that invests in people to understand, to know. Nobody is training anybody now in the act of shoemaking in Nigeria. But we are busy producing graduates in so many other right. fields. And right. then this practical the, 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 crafts see, is there. Are not and the, the issue even was that the whole idea of the Leather Research Institute in Nigeria was to assist. And we have that in Zaria. In Zaria. That is where I went. It's my alma mater. I was there in 1976. But the issue is that we as Nigerians, we just look at things like a play. We don't, there, then, yeah, we don't take it serious. Yeah, we don't take it serious and we don't even do the job. Very yeah. valid point. Right. And I'm afraid on that note, we'll have to end this edition <laughs> thank, of this conversation. Thank you very, thank you very much. much for thank coming. You very much. Thank the you program. very much. It is, uh, it is great. It's great and I uh, enjoyed it too. Viewers, that is the end of this edition of 30 Minutes. Mm -hmm. Keep edited with us.